Hi, I'm Amy. I'm Laura. And we are Two Big Big Girls. Today we're back with another Top 5 Wednesday and this week's topic is the Top 5 settings you want to see more of. We weren't sure this topic meant settings that are already in books that like you want to see more of, like specific like fictional places, or settings just in general, like I don't know, on top of mountains or more like <laughs> fantastical worlds. So we've kind of amalgamated both into our top five list each. We're not doing these in any particular order because we just can't really order them, don't really have a preference for these ones, we just like to see more of them in general. My first one is Pine Mountain Boarding School from The Geology by Andrew Smith, Winger and Standoff. I've just finished Standoff, that'll be coming up in my June wrap up and I just absolutely love the boarding school setting. It was a toss up between Pine Mountain and I forgot where it is but wherever they are in Looking for Alaska oh, by yeah. John Green. But because it's fresh in my mind, Pine Mountain is just so cool. I like the old O-Hall setting with all the like the stowaway kids and I just really like the setting of the boarding school but because it's fresh in my mind, I really want to see more of that setting even though it's over now and the geology is over, it's sad. My first one is the Chatter Me World from the trilogy by Tira Maffey, I'm sure you've heard of it, and um, because the main point of these novels aren't really the dystopian side of it, that's more of a secondary thing to the romance and the kind of character development, like personal growth side of Juliet's storyline, um, so we don't really know much about what's gone on, especially because I haven't read it for about a year, I can't really remember the details, but I definitely remember when I read it, wanting to just know a little bit more, not that I was unhappy with the books in any way, but if she was to do another series set in the same world that was a little bit more focused on what happened, why it's dystopia and kind of where things change after what happens at the end of Ignite Me, that would be nice for it to be a little bit more dystopian based. Because I think she has a really good imagination and it would have just, she would have written it really beautifully, like really good metaphors for like destroyed kingdoms or um, in throwing the glass mode, like destroyed cities and things like that. But um, yeah, we didn't really get to see that in Shatter Me. My next one is the 1920s. I really love The Great Gatsby and I just think the setting was so magical and I just want more of it. And I'm actually pretty sure that there are many, many books out there <laughs> that have got a 1920s setting. I just haven't been adventurous enough yet because when you read one book with such a great setting, it's hard to live up to it again. So I need to find one. So if you know one, that's really good. Tell me in the description. I do have Tremelchi already though, it's like a re, not mm. a rewrite of Grey Gatsby, it's like a really early version that Laura got me for mm. my birthday or Christmas, ago. like <laughs> ages ago, a very long time ago. So I know about that one, but any of us, just let us know. The camera just died, sorry if the camera angle has gone a little bit different, <laughs> but um, my second one is The Wizarding World, because I know we have seven whole books and like now a play that's coming out and there's like a whole... Look, and Pottermore, there's so much information about the Wizarding World, but I always want more. I still have questions, like, why don't they use telephones? Like, why? Like, the Muggle world seems kind of more advanced than the Wizards. I don't really know why that is, because they're great. They can literally, like, change where they are instantly, but then they have to send posts via OWL, which is very slow. So I want to know why. There's just so many unanswered questions about, like, the jobs and the ministries and Hogwarts, and I'm just a nerd and want to know. I want like I want Hogwarts a history. I would read it even if it was like this big. I would read Hogwarts a history and just be like, ooh. So yeah, more Wizarding World would be great. But we might get some in the play. I'm not hopeful for the play. I'm not really that excited. But let's see what people say about it. My next setting that I want to see more of again, probably one that is in plenty of books I just haven't read yet. Prehistoric. I love dinosaurs, Aww. and Laura pointed out this book series, what was it called? And it was like just people riding on oh like God, dinosaurs. Yeah. It was like medieval dinosaur yeah. thing. <laughs> it looked great, it looked right up my street. Um, but I just want to see more prehistoric setting, like maybe mm. even not dinosaurs, just very old, maybe like mm. just a bit of a fantasy, like where people are actually like developed, they're not like Neanderthals, because that would be quite a boring book, he was like, oh, <laughs> oh go, go, go. Yeah, fire. <laughs> it's like, yeah, great, well done. <laughs> But yeah, the uh, prehistoric time session, mm. I just want to see more of that. My next one is another specific and it's Neverland from Peter Pan because Peter Pan is obviously a children's book, it's quite small and the way it's written there's not loads of description and I feel like it's a really good like fantasy land though that for like more of an adult series it could do like really in depth, like the mermaids are really evil and you can have like really good, obviously if you scrap the whole Peter Pan storyline, like if you took uh, that setting and tried to write a new story you could have really good um like detailed fantasy storylines and the setting really just opens for that because it's got mermaids and pirates and like a big forest and the sea and obviously like the fact that it's kind of some weird parallel 
non-existent land like it could just be really cool if it wasn't a child's book but it is and it's great but I would like to see more Neverland because I love Neverland. My next setting is more specific it is the random island that the beauty queens crash on in Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. Um, I just really like the setting of the island like we don't really see much of it they kind of scour out a little bit and there's lots based on the beach with like the English pirates but it's just a hilarious book and I think there's so much to get out of it and the way it ends kind of it kind of wants an, another book like it's all tidied up lovely but it does have that little mm. you could you could carry it on and I just think that would be a really good like way to start another book see more of that setting because I really like it and I really mm. like the character still there my next one is Maggot Moon by Sally Gardner. Again, kind of like Shatter Me, this is a dystopian kind of world. Maggot Moon is a really weird book and it's kind of purposely, you don't get much detail and description because it's in the minds of this kid who's a little bit weird. Like he doesn't, for him it's normal, kind of how the setting is, just what he's grown up with, so he doesn't obviously go into detail. And it's kind of some weird parallel, like Nazis are still around, but then there's a moon landing and it's all a bit weird. Uh, but I love the weirdness of it and I would like to know a little bit more about how it came to be like that. It might just kind of be more of an alternative reality, but it kind of, to me, felt a bit more like a dystopia. So I want to be like, what happened? How did all this happen? And who are those people? And why are they faking the moon landing? Like, I want a little bit more understanding of the world. But it was, again, kind of like Shatter Me, it was a lot more character driven and it ripped out my heart at the end. It was so good. But um, yeah, Maggot Moon is a really good book that not many people have read, so you should go read it. My last setting is specific again, it is a place called Terminus from the Walking Dead series. It's a place with, I can't really say, but basically they eat people here. And it's a good, it's a good little, it's a good little town. But I want to know what it was like before Rick's group came to it. Mm. Like this could go for any of the settings in The Walking Dead because Rick groups come in and he just like fucks everything up. <laughs> and I just want to know like mm. what all these places are like before. Because he is like a dictator himself, like all these other people. Mm. They made up, they make, they're made out to be evil, but Rick's the evil. Anyway, I could talk about <laughs> The Walking Dead for ages, but yeah, I want to see Terminus. It's one of my favourite settings. My last one is Magonia by an author I don't remember the name of. <laughs> I read this book. In... No. No, that was a character's name? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I read this book in October and it was good. It was very weird. I'm not sure if I'm a magical realism person because I was kind of like, why are there people? Why are they real? But why do they have wings? Like, I just, I don't know if I like it. But um, yeah, there was this whole kind of like fantasy land in the sky with like flying ships and bird people. And I found it really hard to visualise. I kind of want it to be a film or a series or like look at art that people have done because I could not picture it. It's like, this woman was blue. I was just like, okay. Um, <laughs> so, I, but also it was kind of very detailed and I read it a bit quick so I didn't really follow what was happening all the time. But I also just kind of want a bit more substance. I want to know, I just always want to know more with all these examples. It's kind of ones where I don't feel like I've understood very well, which might not be the author's fault, it might be mine. But uh, yeah, I want to know a bit more about Magonia and kind of like the politics of it. So there's all this bit about these upper powers, like were horrible to the main characters, and I want to know that. Like, I just want to know what went on. Uh, I think there's going to be a sequel to Magonia, which I don't know if I'll read. I think I'll see the reviews and if we find out a bit more setting information, and if I'll understand it. But it was quite good, and I want to know a bit more. So those are the top five settings that we want to see more of. Again, a very eclectic kind of random mm. selection. <laughs> but when you come to think of it, there's so many settings. Like now, mm. I want, now I really want to see more of Winnie the Pooh. Um, I love Winnie the Pooh. Aww. Where Where does he live? In the Hundred Acre, Acre Wood. Wood. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cute. It would be so cute. But yeah, those are our settings. Um, let us know down below what settings you'd like to see more of. And we probably won't see you on the next Top 5 Wednesday because keep an eye out for our uni summer update video. I don't know if it's already gone up yet. We're about to film it, so it might go up after <laughs> this. But um, we probably aren't going to be able to do Top 5 Wednesday for a little bit. But wait till mid-July or August and we'll be back with hopefully some really good topics. So I'll see you then. Bye.